Personally, I get excited about audio products for one of two main reasons. The first being that something simply sounds fantastic, and the other is when a product offers something new, brings a new design, a new approach, or a new feature that others don't have. And when something can do both of those, offering something unique and sounding fantastic, that can be quite a recipe for success. So today, we will be taking a look at the Ferrum Or and Hypsos. I'm Golden Sound, and you're watching The Headphone Show. The most eye-catching part of the design is the square in which the illuminated FE or Ferrum logo is set. And this unique finish is because this is made of corten or weathering steel, which is a metal that is intended to rust quickly and produce this aesthetic. The rest of the chassis is made of a matte black faceplate, and whilst the body itself is sheet metal, it is finished very nicely and does a good job of resisting fingerprints, and the ventilation provides a nice peek into the internals. On the front, there are balanced and single-ended outputs. No 4.4mm though, unfortunately, so IEM users might need an adapter. And there are also two adjustments, one of which doubles as both the power button and the input selector, and another which adjusts gain. On the back, there are balanced and single-ended inputs, and balanced and single-ended preamp outputs. Unfortunately, these do run simultaneously with the main headphone output, so if you're using this as a preamp for speakers, you can't just turn them off when you want to swap to headphones, you do have to disconnect things. And then there's also the DC barrel input for the stock power supply, and a 4-pin connector for the Hypsos power supply. The two other controls are a brightness adjustment for the front logo, and a bypass switch which disables volume and gain settings, and turns the OR into what is effectively a headphone power amp. Of course, if you want to use that, make sure that you've got some volume control upstream, otherwise you'll blow your ears out. With the bypass enabled, as the name implies, the volume control does not work. Also interestingly, when using the bypass mode, the gain at the output is equivalent to using medium gain with the volume turned up to max, so it seems that rather than low or high being the stock setting for the amp, medium is actually the potentially cleanest signal path. The bypass is a nice feature to have though, because the amp does actually perform objectively ever so slightly better, and to me sounded slightly better, when using it in bypass versus with any of the normal gain settings and adjusting the volume on the amp. But the most impressive thing about the OR is, despite its pretty compact size, just how much power this thing can supply. The specs say quite a bit lower, but I've tested several units and all of them were able to supply up to about 9 watts at 32 ohms. And I don't just mean that it can get up to that at maximum, but it's struggling really hard when it's doing 3 or 4, I mean it can supply up to that level and perform very well when doing so. So really hard to drive headphones are no issue whatsoever on the OR. If you'd like a little bit more information about why the maximum power spec of an amp doesn't actually tell you how well it'll drive difficult headphones, head over to my explainer video where I talk about how much power you really need from your amp and how to tell if it's going to be able to drive difficult headphones. And as well as having a huge amount of power on tap available when you need it, it does handle low level signals for things like in-ear monitors quite nicely. So whilst it's not as low a noise floor as certain more IEM focused products like a Cord Mojo 2 for example, it does handle them very well and I didn't have a perceivable noise floor on almost all the IEMs I've tried. And by the way, if you'd like to see a thorough set of measurements of the Ferrum Ore, they are available on our website, linked in the description, the audio files section of headphones.com. Starting up in the corner of the board, you can see where the 4-pin connector actually goes onto the PCB, and this does allow the Hypsos to sense and correct the voltage on the PCB of the amplifier itself, rather than just at the connector. The input stage of the OR actually converts the single-ended inputs to balanced straight away, so that the full signal path throughout the amplifier is completely balanced and differential, even if you're using single-ended inputs. Some of this circuitry, including the potentiometer itself, is taken out of the signal path if you enable the bypass switch, which means that you can't control volume from here, and the gain is equivalent to using medium gain, because when you use low or high, this circuit is actually doing some either attenuation or added gain before the main amplification stage. And the amplification stage itself, you can see there are four different sections, one for the positive and negative terminal of each channel. And then in terms of grounding and keeping power clean throughout the unit, this is a six layer PCB, two layers of which are just for grounding, and there are three grounds in total. One for signal ground, one for the switching converters, and then one for the input power supply. All of these grounds, and all of the power rails in fact, are separated by common mode chokes. Those help to filter out EMI and switching noise from either the power supply or the switching converters on the board, so quite a thorough setup indeed. So, it's built nicely, the aesthetics are clean and just the right amount of eye-catching without being flash, but how does it sound? I 
I've seen a few people in the audio community saying that they found the Ferrum Ore to be on the warmer side of things. I'm not sure I'd agree with that. If you're comparing it directly to things like a Benchmark HPA4, a THX789 or Topping A90, then yeah, it's warmer than those, but that's because in my view, those were a little bit more on the colder clinical side of things, not so much neutral. For me, the ore, whilst it's warmer than those in a direct comparison, it's nowhere near as warm as something like a NLIM Amp 23R or a Headamp GSX Mini. Overall, I found it really quite close to neutral. It doesn't add any obvious warmth. It doesn't provide an overly analytical or clinical signature either. It remains very uncolored and close to neutral, and whilst doing so, still manages to provide excellent performance in the other areas such as soundstage. This is also a very macrodynamic or slammy sounding amplifier. Every headphone I've run on it has been able to recreate the hard hitting moments without ever feeling constrained or softening the leading edge of percussion hits, for example. It's tight and controlled without being aggressive. And I think that maybe one of the main reasons people refer to this as a warmer or sweeter sounding amp is that the treble in particular on this amp does an amazing job of keeping the detail, keeping the resolution and incisiveness without being as sterile or flat and clinical as a lot of the amps that people upgrading to this might be using before. If you listen to something like a particularly aggressive clarinet or the hi-hat in Michael Jackson's Wannabe Start and Something, it's still as incisive and sharp as it should be. This can and will display even outright sibilance if it is present in the track. It doesn't smooth over or hide it, which some warmer amps do. But it also doesn't fall into the realm of just being sibilant or harsh generally. Tracks like Undercover Martin by Two Door Cinema Club have some vocals, which on some chains can make you wince a bit. But on the or, you get all the speed and incisiveness that you want without those consonants tiring you out after a while. Soundstage and spatial presentation is very good, though it's not necessarily the standout part of the sound signature of this amp. It does stage physically larger than something like a Benchmark HP4, but not necessarily as large as something like a Hollow Bliss. Nothing at all to complain about with spatial presentation, but it's not necessarily what grabs your attention. But whilst I've described this amp as neutral, dynamic, reasonably spacious, and should also add on that detail retrieval is absolutely top notch too, things do change a little bit when you throw in the Hypsos. So let's take a look at that. The Hypsos is a power supply that whilst primarily intended for use with the Ore, Erzo, and future Ferrum products, can also be used as a high quality power supply for any other device if you want to. The UI and menu on the Hypsos is extremely good, and it honestly makes you wonder why so many dedicated portable audio player manufacturers can't match the quality of UI for a power supply. So anyway, good job Ferrum there. And as well as choosing from a large list of device presets, you can also tweak settings yourself, including manually adjusting output voltage, enabling four terminal sensing for correction of voltage drops, and there's also a USB port on the back for firmware updates, which can add new features and device presets. And when you use the Hypsos in conjunction with the OR, two key design aspects come into play. The first is that using the Hypsos in conjunction with the OR and 4-pin cable allows the Hypsos to sense and correct the voltage on the PCB of the amplifier itself. And this allows extremely tightly regulated voltage and ultra-fast correction when the amp draws power suddenly for a transient, for example. And this does seem to have a positive impact on sound. When comparing the OR with the Hypsos versus with the stock power supply, you don't get any change in detail or even the maximum power that the amp can output. But during those times when you've got sudden transient swings, the kick of a drum or the incredibly snappy synth in Mitch Murder's Reconnaissance, for example, everything just sounds a little bit tighter and better controlled. Things are overall faster and harder hitting. And for the OR specifically, you can adjust the voltage anywhere between 22 volts and 30 volts. And whilst this doesn't have a drastic impact on sound, it does tune things slightly. The lower in voltage you go, the more the amp begins to sweeten up, leaning a little bit towards the warmer side of things. It loses a little bit of incisiveness, but it adds a warmth that can be really quite ideal for certain genres. And going the other way up towards 30 volts, things start to get a bit faster and more analytical. You do lose a little bit of realism and vocals and instruments start to sound just a touch thinner, but for electronic music in particular, the extra speed and impact that you get can be quite a nice addition. I tended to find that the stock voltage, 24 volts, was just perfect for pretty much everything, but if I was listening to just classical, I would find myself wanting to turn the voltage down just a bit. And if I was listening to purely synthetic music, the extra speed and incisiveness by turning the voltage up was a nice addition too. So it's quite cool to be able to have that tweak on hand. I think that the gap in performance between the OR standalone versus the OR with the Hypsos is reasonably small, and spending 50% more is not necessarily going to make sense for everyone. At under $2,000 for the OR with the stock power supply, 
I can't think of any other product which I would rather have instead of this. And in fact, I was using the OR as my reference headphone amp for testing and evaluating headphones for a few months. But with the Hypsos, whilst it is a nice addition in terms of sound quality and just being able to tune things a little bit, it does push the price point over $3,000, which means that there are some other competitive products which might grab your attention. But ignoring any kind of potential difference in sound quality or performance or flavor preference, there is one thing which the OR definitely has over the competition, even at much higher price points, which is size. Even if spending $3,000 is completely within your budget, other amplifiers around that price point, like the Hollow Bliss, the Flux Labs Velot, or the Headamp GSX Mark II, are all pretty big. And even if your wallet can take it, your desk might not. This has over the competition the advantage of size. It is so much more compact than the other options, whilst retaining the performance and the power delivery as well. I think that the OR offers truly incredible performance for the money in an extremely attractive form factor and package. Whether or not the Hypsos makes sense doesn't so much depend on your budget, but more how much space you have available. The Hypsos does step up the performance another notch and offers some flexibility in tuning, but I would absolutely not say that you need it. If you are interested in purchasing a Ferrum OR or Hypsos, they are available at headphones.com. I hope you found that video entertaining and useful, and if you'd like to come and ask me or other Wiggly Air enthusiasts any questions, come and say hello on our Discord server or the headphones.com forum. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.